This is a brief video about the Herkimer OK CO2 motor and the squirt boat, or how I spent my time during COVID-2021. The Herkimer CO2 motor is a small unit that weighs just about an ounce with an aluminum crankcase and a steel cylinder. It's powered by the pressure generated by a CO2 cartridge. It'll rev up to 7,000 RPM and its displacement is only 0.11 cc's. The Herkimer CO2 motor was designed by and licensed from Bill Brown. The disassembled motor is shown in the right-hand panel. The red aluminum assembly is the cartridge holder and the rest of the components will go through one at a time. The power source for the Herkimer CO2 engine is the so-called 8-gram CO2 cartridge, most commonly used to produce carbonated seltzer water. A full steel cartridge weighs 29 grams, or just over one ounce, and contains 8 grams of CO2 in either liquid or gaseous form, depending on the ambient temperature and pressure inside the vessel. At 70 degrees Fahrenheit and at 840 PSI or greater, the CO2 is in liquid form. A section cartridge is shown here where the red wall of the steel vessel is 1 32nd of an inch thick. The operational instructions shown on the right explain that the engine can run in either clockwise or counterclockwise direction and that the speed and power of the engine can be adjusted by slightly raising or lowering the cylinder on the crankcase. The cartridge is placed in the holder and the thumb screw tightened to pierce the cartridge. Subsequently, the screw is backed off one turn to open the passage to the copper tubing and onto the engine. As we'll see, the engine generates high torque, so a relatively large eight inch diameter propeller is recommended. The piston of the CO2 motor is shown in the bottom left, and you can see that there's a small pin in the center of the piston, and that is what displaces the ball inside the head of the CO2 motor. When the piston rises, the pin raises the red ball, which unseals the top of the cylinder, allowing the pressurized CO2 gas to come into the cylinder and turn the crank. The ball in the cylinder assembly is shown on the right. As the piston descends during the power stroke, the red ball becomes seated in the head of the cylinder, sealing off the high pressure CO2 gas. The expanding CO2 shown in yellow pushes the piston down to where it eventually reaches bottom dead center and the gas is vented to the atmosphere for the cycle to repeat itself. Here is an interesting diagram borrowed from Fritz Mueller showing the working pressures inside the engine during the working cycle. On the right hand side with the yellow arrow is the pressure diagram for the expansion cycle showing the pressures as the piston moves downward. One bar of pressure is equal to 14.5 pounds per square inch. The feed pressure of 34 bar, or 490 PSI, is reduced to 20 bars as the piston starts to descend, the gas expanding and doing work, pushing the piston downward. The gas pressure is reduced to 5 bar, or approximately 73 PSI, at the time the exhaust ports open as the piston nears bottom dead center. Looking at the left side of the pressure diagram with the red arrow, as the piston rises, there is an inescapable compression cycle where a pressure of two to three bar is reached before the piston pin starts to open the ball, which is otherwise held tightly against the seat by the supply gas pressure. There is a short period where the gas supply is entering the cylinder while the piston is still rising. And it is this part of the cycle which requires sufficient component momentum to push the piston up and over top dead center instead of backwards. The RPM, power, and duration of the CO2 engine can be adjusted 
by slightly raising or lowering the threaded cylinder in the crankcase. Lowering the cylinder prolongs the intake duration, increasing power, but will decrease the run time. Expansion engines are relatively high torque due to the high pressure in the cylinder, and thus relatively large diameter propellers of significant mass are the best match for these engines. I received my Herkimer CO2 engine as a gift from a friend just as COVID struck. Once receiving the motor, it became clear that, well, now I needed to run it. So I set up a test stand using a three blade propeller, five inch diameter by three inch pitch with about a third of an ounce of uh, washers to act as a flywheel. So the motor worked well for a while, but then I found out I had a leaky joint. So a brief soldering job was in order and I was back in business. You might wonder why CO2 motors have fins on their cylinders. In contrast to internal combustion engines, which are trying to dissipate heat from their hot cylinders uh, during operation, the CO2 motors are the opposite, trying to absorb heat through the fins to warm the motor, which is being rapidly cooled by the expanding CO2 gas. And in fact, under humid conditions, you can see frost forming on all parts of the power system. Now that I had an operational vintage CO2 motor, the question became, what do I do with it? The most common option is a lightweight free flight aircraft such as this FizzWiz designed by Aubrey Cockman in 1962. It has about a six ounce flying weight and a 20 inch wingspan CO2 motor was charged, the airplane was hand launched, it would circle up and then glide back down to the ground. A free flight CO2 aircraft required 
more space than was readily available to me, so I found a 1950s CO2 squirt boat on eBay for $50, and this would become my project. Shown here are most of the components of the kit, uh, which was all balsa wood sheeting with some mahogany plywood bulkhead shown on the right in the reddish color, and an acetate windshield. Essential to the proper operation of a CO2 motor in a boat is a flywheel. And the flywheel was not included in the squirt kit. However, this notation found inside the box stated for a price of 20 cents at your hobby shop or 20 cents plus 5 cents postage by mail, the appropriate, appropriate flywheel could be obtained from the Scientific Model Airplane Company in Newark, New Jersey. This is both the plans and instructions for the construction of the squirt boat. Uh, the boat is 13 inches long when assembled, about four inches wide, and weighed about five and a half ounces ready to run. The kit has a low parts count and is very easy to assemble. Shown here is the CO2 motor mounted in the hull with a 27 gram flywheel adapted from a Dumas uh, kit boat uh, with a one inch diameter propeller which was included in the square kit on the right. Here are a few shots of the completed hull showing its simple design and construction. The exterior of the hull was sealed with several coats of spray shellac. This is the completed squirt boat assembly with the Herkimer motor. Of note towards the center of the photograph is a loop of copper tubing, which connects the cartridge assembly to the top of the motor. This tubing provides slack, which allows the manipulation of the cartridge assembly as well as a loop to warm and expand the CO2 gas before it enters the motor. So now that I had my gifted motor installed in a $50 boat, came time to run the squirt boat. I chose a flooded rainwater retention basin, which only had one or two feet of water. Uh, it was a one man operation. So I was working the camera as well as trying to run the boat. The boat has no rudder, but propeller torque will turn the boat to starboard. The inside of the boat is very small with tight quarters and very fragile construction, and I have rather large fingers. So it was a challenge to get it started correctly, as you will see. The other downfall to the upcoming video is the camera is held in my teeth, which explains the heavy breathing and for which I apologize. You can clearly see the fog of escaping gas when the piston got stuck at top dead center during my initial try to start the motor. Because of the humid day, the release of the cold gas condensed, leaving a nice vapor trail. I need to add some weight to the stern of the boat to better submerge the propeller, which in the video thrashed along the top of the water instead of efficiently driving the boat forward. 
The use of a pull cord wrapped around the flywheel as a pull starter is another thing I will try. Certainly I need to get a head mount for the camera to eliminate the heavy breathing. I need to bring twice as many CO2 cartridges as I'd ever think I'd need because you tend to go through them. And I hope for a heavy rain to refill my running pond. As a next step, why not build a hydroplane? This is the one sheet plan for the uh, Whizzer, a fizz powered speedboat which uses a similar setup as the squirt boat. And I'd be glad to share this uh, plan, this short article with anybody who requests it. Thank you for watching.